Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Moving on to the next concept. I'm now going to talk about mixed costs in this video. And when I say mixed costs, basically what I mean by that is a mix of variable and fixed costs. So before, when I talked about variable and, and uh, fixed costs, I basically described both of them separately. But in this video, we're going to mix them up because obviously in a company, you're going to have both variable and fixed costs mixed together. Now in the video on fixed and variable costs, I went over an example with the car factory. I'm actually going to be bringing back that example here into this video. So make sure you watch that video as well before watching this one. And as a review of that example, I wrote out the chart over here. So we had the number of cars produced and then we went over the variable costs and the fixed costs, right? So I sort of summarized it all in this chart. And so with mixed costs, what you're going to be doing is you're actually going to be taking the total of the variable and the fixed costs for a certain output. So here, zero plus four, that would give us four million. These M's, by the way, they represent millions. And then two and a half million plus four million, that would give us six and a half million. Five million plus four million, that would give us nine million. Seven and a half plus four, that would give us 11.5 million. And then we'd have 14 million. Uh, and then uh, 16 and a half million, like that. And so we're sort of going to be ignoring these columns here, the variable and fixed columns, and we're going to be focusing on this column now, right? We're mixing both costs together. And we're going to obviously be focusing on the output column too. So if I take both of those columns and I graph them out, so the number of cars is going to go on the x-axis as before, and then the total cost is going to be on the y-axis. So now I'm going to be looking at these two. So for an output of zero cars, we still have to pay that fixed cost of 4 million, even though there's no variable costs. So that's going to be over here. And basically the Y intercept of a graph is always going to be the fixed cost amount. And then for a hundred cars, we got six and a half million. So that's going to be like uh, over here. And then for 200, we got 9 million, which was going to be right in the middle there. 11 and a half for 300. So that would be, like over here. And then for 400, we got 14 million. That's over here. And then for 500, we got 16 and a half million, which is gonna be like uh, up here. This is maybe not the most to scale, but hopefully you get where I am going with this. All right, so that's how the graph is going to look. Now, what if we were to make an equation for this? Well, if you remember the equation of a line, it's just generally y equals mx plus b. And this m here, it represents the slope, and this b value represents the y-intercept. So when we're talking about costs, basically this m here, it's gonna represent the variable costs per unit. That's gonna be the slope, and then the b value is gonna represent the fixed costs. So if you remember, how do we get these figures over here? Well, we said in the variable cost video that to produce a car, it's gonna, the variable cost is gonna be 25,000 per car. So that's how we got this two and a half million. We took the 25,000 multiplied it by 100. So the variable cost per unit or per car in this case is 25,000. So we know if we make a cost equation, it's basically gonna be 25,000 x plus that fixed cost of four million dollars so i'm going to write it out fully in this case right that's the equation of this line over here and instead of putting y I put a c just to represent the cost and then this x here it represents the uh number of cars Right, so to get any of these values, you could actually test this equation. So we could plug in, for example, 400 there. 
So 25,000 times 400 plus 4 million, and it should give you 14 million. You could always test the equations that you get. So sometimes you'll be given equations, and uh, sometimes you're going to have to create them. But just remember, they're always going to be in this format. The slope is going to be the variable cost per unit. And then uh, the B value here, that's going to always be the fixed cost. Now, this example that we just did, it's actually not too bad. It's pretty easy because we were given what that variable cost per unit is already. Right? We were given it in the chart, and we were also given the fixed cost. Notice this column over here. But sometimes what's going to happen is you're just going to get a bunch of points in the middle. Right? So you're not going to know what the variable cost is, and you're not going to know what the fixed cost is. And so you're going to have to actually derive this formula. You're going to have to get that variable cost per unit. You're going to have to get that fixed cost from a bunch of points using different methods.